Yes, so we are going to give you an overview about uh, portability in Apache Beam and the development um, over the last uh, year or so, current state of SDKs and runners, and uh, with that, Max is going to start. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Um, really happy to be here today and um, to be talking about um, portability, which is um, a really exciting um, topic in Apache Beam and um, really a unique, um, well, really with something where Beam stands out. And um, we're also very excited to be demoing um, a really cool new feature regarding um, portability, uh, which is cross-language pipelines. So let's, let's start off. I want to um, take a step back and look back to the early days of Apache Beam. And from that, we can better understand how the vision for portability developed. So in the early days, like 2014, um, there was only Java SDK. And um, well, we had over the years, we, um, we had different runners come across, uh, with Flink and Spark being the first and the direct runner. And um, well, the main goal was actually at that time to get the data flow model right, because that was a new thing at that time, and it took us a lot of work to um, fully um, and correctly implement um, the whole model. Um, yeah. So um, what that model meant, I mean, I'm not going to over the model, obviously, it would be, um, way, take way too much time. But um, it was a really easy way um, to do portability. Because we, we had just had one API, and all the backends uh, were written in Java, well, with the exception of Google Cloud Dataflow, but at least in the source, it was only Java, and it's, it still is. And um, so we had these transforms that we need to translate, um, which um, required like um, carefully, carefully designed abstractions to wrap around the runtime capabilities of the uh, runners um, and the execution engines. And also, we had to provide like libraries to um, implement functionality that the backend, the execution backend, uh, could not provide, like windowing and timers. Um, so that was a lot of work necessary to get side input, state timers um, correctly working. And we also developed new features like um, user state, which didn't exist in the beginning. So we we listened to our users, and um, that's how it developed. And now we have this much broader vision for Apache Beam. Um, we have uh, a bunch of languages and um, even more uh, runners. And um, we want to be able to support all these languages uh, in an efficient and um, correct way. And um, if, we see, if we look at um, the time frame uh, when this happened, we can see that this kind of naturally developed. So 2014, only Java. Um, then 2016, we had Scala, which is really, I mean, runs on the JVM, so it's not a problem. And then we had Python coming up. And um, there was really the question, um, how are we going to implement it so every runner can support this, and not only data flow, uh, which, which was the sub first one to um, support um, uh, Python in batch and uh, later in streaming. Um, so I think you already um, got it got clear now that there are kind of two types of dimensions for portability. There's like execution engine portability and language portability. And uh, we want, really want to have both. And the second part, the language portability, is what, um, yeah, what we were concerned mostly like the last one to two years. And um, that's really exciting, I think. Um, so how does this, um, how does it work, this transition from like just one, uh, just one language to multiple languages. So um, naive way to do this would, of course, be um, to let every like SDK figure out its way to trans like to call out to do an RPC call to the execution engine to tell it like what it what it like should do. And similarly, on the execution side, let every runner like have some abstraction to bring up a Python SDK com and or Python runtime and communicate with it. But that would be um, very naive. So of course, that's not what we did. So the first uh, step was to introduce uh, the runner API, which is an abstraction. It's, a, it's basically a standardized format for pipelines in, written in protobuf. And with that, because there are bindings in all the languages, we can just um, easily um, generate this format. And the runner just have to, has to understand this format 
Um, we provide like uh, libraries for that um, so it can easily um, understand or make reason of the pipeline definition across languages. So next step is to, um, to have an execution um, layer which allows us to um, have a, a standardized interface for the runners to um, um, talk with uh, the, the, the language execution part of each SDK. And we call that the fun API because it was cause so much fun to implement it. Uh, well, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, we have that in place now. So we are really set up. So we, really, we, we came from um, this kind of uh, Java-centric portability vision to uh, a, a truly um, portable um, way of running Beam pipelines, uh, which is really exciting. Um, so how, how does that look, I mean, just to get a rough uh, like overview. Um, so now we have, the, we have basically the SDK, the SDK um, Python or Java, which generates the Java API. Then we have a, a, the job server, which um, is also Beam component, which takes care of um, managing the life cycle of the job and um, providing a, that unified way for configuration. Um, and then the job server, it calls out to, well, calls the runner and um, gets the translation. And we didn't even really have to change like all the, all the existing runners. Uh, we just had to provide a way to um, basically translate these executable stages, which use the fun API to communicate with the so-called SDK harness, uh, which runs the, the language de par uh, dependent parts of the pipeline. And yeah, we are, where are we with the state of the SDKs? So obviously Java is very mature. Python um, is um, now also um, very, very well supported on the Flink runner and um, uh, on Dataflow and um, Spark um, has batch support already. Um, Go um, is, has also good batch support, um, but still lacking streaming features. And there's a talk by Robert Burke. Uh, it's, I don't know, am I pronouncing this correctly? Um, yeah, let's go see Robert's talk, and uh, he will walk you through the Go SDK. Very exciting. And with that being said, um, I will uh, hand over to uh, Thomas, to, and we will hear a bit about the state uh, of the runners. Thank you, Max. So let's continue uh, looking at the runners, um, and specifically the runners that support portability. There are three open source runners that have support for portability right now. Those are Flink, Samsa, and Spark. Uh, let's start with Flink. Flink is one of the first, or it was the first open source runner uh, in uh, Beam for Java. We call it also now the classic Java-only runner. It understands how to run Java pipelines uh, on uh, Beam, Java Beam pipelines. Um, it is fair, it is mature, it is uh, feature complete, and it is used by a number of companies in production, also at scale. Now the portable Flink runner is essentially a different runner, and uh, to be more precise, there are four Flink runners really. There is a classic Flink runner for streaming and for batch each, and uh, the same is uh, true for the portable runner due to how the Flink API uh, currently work. So the portable runner is a, a new implementation and it reached the MVP um, stage in uh, end of 2018, end of uh, last year. It's r uh, the only option to run Python on Flink really that is out there uh, today. Um, this portable runner has a um, limited set of I.O. still but uh, Max is going to show in his demo how um, streaming I.O. Uh, can be done uh, with Kafka, with this new portable runner. While with the old Flink runner, you can all use all the Java Beam I.O. Um, this capability opens up a wide range of new use cases, especially in the uh, machine learning area. And uh, we will uh, see a few that are, in fact, adopting uh, Python on Flink via Beam. Uh, in that segment. So if, out of the portable runners, this is the most complete runner as well. It was the first portable runner um, that uh, the Beam project has. 
So let's take a look how the architecture that Max um, showed you already uh, is more specifically um, working on, on Flink, on a Flink setup. If you are the uh, pipeline author, you would write uh, your pipeline in Python, and then you would use the Python tooling to launch the pipeline, like any other Python program. The job server address is a parameter that is needed because this pipeline needs to be submitted by the SDK client to the job server, which is implemented with the Flink runner. This uh, Flink runner takes the portable pipeline uh, representation, which is language agnostic, generated by Python in this case, and translates it into a Flink job. Uh, this Flink job then is submitted to a Flink cluster, which to those of you that work with Flink will look familiar, except that uh, there is uh, this SDK worker. Uh, the SDK worker is a Python process that can execute the Python code, because there's user, Python user code uh, that um, was supplied with the pipeline. So this um, SDK worker has to communicate with uh, the Java side of the Flink runner uh, to um, achieve its purpose. And those are the FN services. The FN services contain of various planes. Uh, we'll not go into the details here, but there's information available uh, elsewhere, um, which is a very nice introduction if you want to learn more about it. The worker communicates with FN services over gRPC, and this is how the execution is driven. On a high level, imagine when you have a streaming job, records are coming record by record. These records are being forwarded from uh, Flink, uh, from the Beam runner to the Python worker. The Python worker then will return results. And there are a lot of details um, to make this work for the entire Beam model. Next uh, portable runner, and this I show them in the order in which the, uh, the, the implementation started. Uh, the next one was SAMSA, and that's interesting because SAMSA is actually itself a very new runner in Beam. It came in 2018, and uh, the folks at uh, LinkedIn they uh, then also started uh, the, uh, to implement the portability support um, because they uh, want to use uh, Python as well. So this runner is still under development, but it already supports basic feature set for both batch and streaming. And it doesn't have some of the uh, features implemented yet, like side inputs, user state, timers, metrics, which will come. And uh, you can learn more uh, about the Samsa runner in Shinyu's uh, talk. Uh, which is um, tomorrow afternoon. The third open source portable beam runner is Spark, and Spark is also under active development right now. This portable runner supports only batch. Um, there are still a few to dos on the timers and metrics side, but otherwise, I believe the batch support is complete. Uh, and please learn more in uh, Ismail and uh, David's talk, uh, which is tomorrow morning. So to sum it up, uh, this is the uh, capability matrix uh, for uh, portable runners. Uh, you can see that Flink is pretty much complete. There are a number of companies that already use this uh, Flink runner, Python on Flink, uh, Spark, pretty complete on the batch side, uh, not on streaming. Uh, some are batch and streaming, but not all model features implemented yet. So next, uh, let's look at a few use cases. Um, so the first one is from Lyft. Lyft implemented dynamic pricing with um, Python and Beam and Flink, because Lyft is running Flink as the stream processing engine for all other use cases as well. Uh, the dynamic pricing is basically the computation of a price taking into account location and time um, and um, providing a multiplier on a base fare to uh, control the supply and demand balance on a high level. Um, what needs to be done here is uh, to compute periodically, and this means millions of locations within uh, each minute to have the um, prime time factor ready that is applied to the base price to figure out how much your lift ride will cost. So this system is 
reading streams from Kinesis, uh, then there's a very high level conceptual view, filtering events, it does aggregations, think of it as a feature uh, computation, and then it runs models in the same pipeline. So this is a streaming model execution that is happening here. You can learn more about this and other things that we do at Lyft from Sharon in her talk later this morning. Uh, next use case is from LinkedIn, a streaming model inference on Samsa. Um, at LinkedIn, the main uh, use case is for Beam or Java um, with Kafka I.O. Uh, but there are also many emerging machine learning scenarios that would benefit from the stream processing in Python. And in this example, it's a character recognition uh, that is being run on an input stream um, doing a near-line model inference. Uh, the next one as well from the Samsa folks uh, is a model training uh, with Python on the Samsa runner. Um, so it's a hybrid approach for model training. Uh, they, they create a global model using batch processing, using Spark and Hadoop, but then they also want to use uh, streaming execution to do uh, incremental or partial updates to the model. Uh, for example, uh, when new members are coming to the website. The next example, and I hope this gives you an idea what can be done with this uh, portability support in Beam is uh, Hopsworks uh, feature store and machine learning pipelines where the feature engineering uh, is uh, done or can be done with Beam as one of the options. It's Python on Flink again. Uh, you can, uh, oh, this image didn't make it. That is uh, too bad. Oh, actually it works. I just don't know how to do it. So Kafka is the input. And um, then data preparation is done with the Flink runner. And uh, then the features are stored in the feature store. So a Beam here is used uh, for TFX machine learning support for the feature engineering and uh, for TensorFlow transform and data validation. And also for the model analysis. And uh, yes, uh, the team uh, will uh, talk about this more in their talk this evening. And the final example here is from Yelp. Uh, Yelp is also working on um, pi making Python work on Flink. It's actually a similar situation like the one we have at Lyft. They have a lot of existing code that was written in Python, and they want to make this run in streaming on Flink. Um, so this large amount of business logic that is already implemented is critical to reuse uh, for the streaming. Uh, the streaming infrastructure at Yelp relies on Kafka uh, for the message uh, storage and transport and Flink for real-time processing. Now the Beam Python SDK is a way to adapt Flink uh, to, for the Python users. And um, so here's another use case for the Flink portable runner. With that, uh, Max is going to uh, tell you more about what is next uh, for portability. Thank you, Thomas. OK, what's next? Um, yeah, we heard a lot about, what, about work that has been done, but what are the things that we are excited about? So um, one problem we still have to solve uh, in all the SDK, new SDKs is that we have a large set of connectors for reading, writing data um, into and um, out of Apache Beam. And this, these connectors developed over years, right? And um, have been like battle tested and um, implementing, re-implementing them in a different SDK uh, is going to be, um, take a lot of work and probably going to be very error prone. And um, yeah, and so what is the solution for that? Um, yes, we can just use cross-language pipelines. So what are cross-language uh, pipelines? Well, it is exactly, um, it's just like the consequence of having a proper port language portability model in which um, the, the runner, which, um, uh, that, well, the SDK, uh, which produces the runner um, API, 
um, the standardized format, it just um, it can resolve external transforms. So, for instance, if I if I wanted to use a Kafka um, connector in Python and um, uh, Python doesn't really have one yet, and the, the tooling support for Kafka and Python, I, I believe, is not that great. So we can just say, let's let's use the Java Kafka connector, and then we will. I will show you how this works in a second. But basically, we will say, let's use the Kafka connector, and then we have this expansion server, which um, resolves um, the, which calls into Java and resolves the the Kafka connector transform and places it into the pipeline. And then we, when we bring up our pipeline, uh, we, just, we just see you know, this transform actually requires the Java uh, runtime environment, um, so the Java SDK harness. And we, we use that to run uh, the Kafka connector. And for all the other code, we can, we can use, still use Python um, or any other language. So that sounds already pretty exciting, but um, at least the idea. But, um, does it really work? I mean, uh, so um, here's an example, um, a, like an actual API example that is already included in the uh, in Beam. Um, it's experimental support, but um, you can see you can, you have this read from Kafka um, transform, where you can pa pass like normal configuration values, like uh, a consumer config, uh, some parameters, the topic. And then that expands via the expansion. Like first, it expands to an external transform. So this is just a wrapper, this read from Kafka, and um, the expansion service um, then gets this expansion request and um, calls out um, um, to Java um, and um, returns the expansion response to the SDK, which which then this response um, is included in the in the pipeline protobuf definition. And we have uh, currently multiple expansion service, one for Java, one for Python. Um, probably we'll have a unified one. Um, so there's some, some stuff like still to be um, like, uh, fine-tuned, but um, we have the basic stuff uh, in place, which is, uh, which is really exciting. So um, to show you uh, that that stuff actually works, I, um, I want to I recorded a demo. Uh, it's the first time I actually recorded a demo because I'm just too old to do live demos uh, now. <laughs> so I think it's better quality than this image. <laughs> uh, OK, so what do we have here? So um, first of all, um, I have this split screen stuff going on here. At the, at the top, um, I have a list of running Docker containers. And you can see. Um, there's nothing running. Um, so the, the SDK harnesses, they will be started in Docker containers. That's why I'm showing this. And the first thing we need to do is um, bring up uh, the job server, the Flink job server. We use Flink in this case. And um, you can see that um, we have now brought up the job server, which hosts um, artifact service, job service, and an expansion service. So now that, that this is running, uh, we can actually um, start a Kafka cluster because why not? Um, <laughs> so let's bring up Zookeeper um, here on the on the left top, and uh, then let's start a actual Kafka broker. So there you have it. Uh, Kafka seems to be running. Um, now to demonstrate uh, reading and writing to Kafka, which uh, we I will show you code next, which we want to do, uh, we use these um, Kafka console producer consumer tools that are included with Kafka just to easily see input output, uh, verify it. Um, so we start uh, a, a producer on the top, which writes to the um, demo topic, and um, then we have uh, a consumer here to read from the demo topic, just to uh, verify um, we actually we, this stuff is working. And so if we write a value here, um, like test, um, we will see, um, yeah, now there's test in this demo topic. It makes sense. Um, what we're going to do next now, uh, which is the exciting part, is start also consumer for another topic um, called um, demo output. 
So, and we can see once we bring this up um, that there is no output. So we're not cheating. So I'm going to add some more output. Can you read this? It's not appearing in the, in the demo output, just in the demo topic. OK. Now we are um, completed our Kafka setup. Uh, we can now, um, ooh, hope you can read this. So we now have our Beam pipeline here. It has uh, a read from Kafka with just the um, uh, like offset, latest offset, and um, the demo topic as a parameter. And of course, our Kafka cluster URL. And um, we gen, um, I'm, it's not really that fancy, but <laughs> we, we just do like an upper casing um, of, of the input to verify that we actually changed uh, something. And um, then rewrite it out to the demo output Kafka topic. And um, we use the portable runner here and um, the job server URL, um, yeah, some Kafka parameters. And yeah, so we are now ready to, to run this thing. So let's run it. So you can see it's, it's running. Uh, throwing some warning, but yeah, so now if we switch back to uh, the Flink job server, we can see here uh, it's running in like embedded mode um, just for simplicity, but you can see this. There's some stuff going on, some artifacts being staged, um, and containers being set up. So we have now here already the Java container running, which runs the Kafka, um, Kafka um, um, producer. And um, then we have uh, the Python container also running. And we can see here from the output, uh, it's very verbose. So here, for example, the Kafka producer is like outputting some info messages. Um, so let's see if, um, since this stuff is running, let's see if it's actually working. Let's switch back to our topic here and input some, um, <laughs> yeah. So let's write like, I like all caps. Let's see what turns out. Yes, and it's actually um, processed that data and turned it into all caps. And uh, it has written it to the demo output. So I guess that proves that this stuff is working. <laughs> OK. Um, thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure you can even read this, but yeah. Okay, so now I lost my speaker notes. Damn. Okay. Um, so beyond this, um, there's obviously more work to do. Um, we still have some performance optimizations um, to do. I mean, now all this stuff is working and it's working correctly. That's the most important thing. Um, we are working on tuning performance. Then there's another question arising. Um, how do we arti stage artifacts for like different um, languages run in the which run in the same pipeline. Right now, the model is kind of to um, have the main SDK, well, Python in, in this case, in the example which I showed, like stage the artifacts. But um, we might have to, you know, um, if you have custom, if you have a custom um, library that you want to use in your external transform, we might want to um, have a way to stage those artifacts. And right now, they kind of have to be included in the, um, in the SDK harness image which is not a huge problem, but um, eventually we want to solve that. And we also want to publish containers. Right now you have to build them manually. We're working on that. And obviously there's some exciting threats like um, splittable doFN, which uh, we have basic support now, but um, uh, we need to um, finish up with. Um, we have um, um, a lot of, I think we have some talks about TFX um, um, come here and also in the keynote. and um, Python 3 support is obviously a topic that we will talk about also in this keynote. Um, we have um, SQL support, which is um, getting more mature and um, allowing you to run uh, interactive queries. And also, I think 
um, we should start looking um, around for um, other projects which might make use of um, Beam as a, a language portability framework. Um, so we, are, um, we have some ongoing discussions there um, because other projects basically face the same issues as Beam. Uh, so that's very, very exciting. Um, and that's it from our side. Thank you so much.